pretty quickly. Uh, did really nothing to it, honestly. So just gave it a little bit of a sort of walking pose and just tilted the head a little bit towards us. And that's really about it. So I've already decimated it so you guys didn't have to wait through that thing, the whole process of me doing that. And uh, let's go ahead and import here. And we'll go ahead and get the body. And when you're working in Keyshot, it's pretty simple. Just make sure to keep original location, keep the original size. As far as your up orientation, depending on how you started, maybe you uh, did a base mesh instead of Z spheres, which is totally fine. You know, maybe you're watching this uh, and you're just looking into the lighting uh, of the tutorial. Uh, just try and see which one it is. I think mine is Y. Uh, I tried X and X sort of had it lying down on the floor. If it's not Y, I'll just pause really quickly here and uh, yeah, so it's negative Y. So I was right, but it's negative Y. So really quick way to just uh, re-import that now that we know. Sometimes ZBrush uh, does do that for us uh, and uh, sort of inverts things, but now that we know it's pretty quick to just come in here and do a minus Y just go ahead and import that. I don't want to snap to ground, I don't want to move the geometry in any way, just keep it original that way when you join the two pieces you'll be fine. So this is our body, as you can see I just really quickly posed it here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click shift P uh, just to pause the rendering here because this is an intensive uh, process on our processor and uh, you don't really want to, you know, I don't want to crash a key shot or something when we're just trying to bring things in because recording also is uh, processor intensive. So these lessons are always a little bit uh, strange because there's a lot of pausing here and there just for me to wait for the render to come through and, and things like that. So again, you can just, as the size, same scale as last import, and then add to scene, keep original, minus Y. It should, generally speaking, pop uh, exactly where we want it to. In this case, I merged the head and the teeth together and for some reason it didn't, uh, I guess I, I imported two bodies instead of two heads. That's uh, my mistake. So let's go ahead and just import it again. And this time let's just go ahead and try to keep original and see if it works the same way. Both should do exactly the same thing. And there we go. Totally popped into place. Uh, well it looks like it did. There we go. Just had to set it to inches and uh, that fixed it. So, uh, okay, so here's uh, our guy. Uh, as you can see, uh, this little window here is not necessarily uh, the size we wanted to, but I would like to get a nice angle here. Uh, we can show the feet. I don't think that's a problem. Uh, we can later play around with the the composition there. So something like this is probably what I'm looking for. Just going to place him roughly as best as I can. Now, uh, ideally here, I'm just going to play around with some HDRs. Uh, I'm going to do the skin shader for you guys, but when I'm going to go ahead and do the actual render, I'm going to uh, do it off uh, screen, you know, in between lessons because uh, my screen is actually really, really small right now for the recording dimensions. So what ends up uh, happening is that it makes it very difficult for me to see uh, how the render is going to turn out uh, in such a small little screen space. And I can't really zoom this in properly. So just so you guys know, that's probably what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to focus a little bit more on the face here and try to to get sort of a... I really like uh, what I got on the, on the scars on the mouth there. So, materials. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, in our library we can go find translucency. And we can do human skin 1, human skin 2, uh, both work. I think human skin one is fine, so I'll just drag and drop here. And if we're going to change anything, uh, since it's not one material, we'll go ahead and change it on both materials the same way. Now, ideally, we don't want that much translucency, so generally speaking, I like to leave it at 1.5 for skin. Uh, it tends to give me the best results, so just going to double click this, 1.5. Now I want his skin to be a little bit darker, so the surface color itself, uh, what I'm going to do is, I was thinking something like a dark gray, so something like this. So I'm going to go for, um, let's try a dark gray with some red tones, like so. So we'll do, I think 
Okay, so this here is pretty good. So 41, 33, 33. So we can go uh, with that to our other material, which does not have that color, which is now 41, 33, 33. Then we'll match it like so. And then we have this purplish sort of translucent color. One of the things that is also ideal for us to tweak, and uh, it may not seem like it now, but as soon as we change the lighting, we're gonna need to uh, change the specularity. So let's change the background. I always like to do my renders in either this factory or this uh, industrial part here. So I'm gonna try for the industrial here. It's, a, as you can see, fairly lit up and instantly you can see that the specularity goes a little bit um, haywire. So we definitely want to play around with that because we don't want him to look wet. And it's, he's definitely going to look like that if we're not careful. And as far as the subsurface, uh, subsurface color goes, is I think this is fine. Subsurface is looking okay. We can maybe, I guess, up the translucency a little bit more. Just a tad, maybe 2.5, just to get a little bit of that effect get going. So we'll do some tests like this. Uh, 2.5. I think that's going to be good. Now, as far as the environment goes, we can go here on this tab here on the project tab and just rotate it a little bit here. Maybe try to make him backlit a little bit. I think this is more what I'm going for, more of a backlighting, more of a dark uh, render, something like this. And I like the idea that the light is going to sort of shine around his face and it's going to be really menacing looking. So this is more likely what I'm looking to do. Now, um, you can always set your environment to a color. So if you want, you can just do like a dark color and just say, okay, look, I'm going to, I'm just going to focus on what the model looks like. You can also load in a backplate image if you want to do something like that. But this here is more or less what I'm going for, just an ominous look. Uh, and we'll be able to play around a lot with these, uh, sort of lighting situations with our textures inside of Photoshop. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I think uh, the lighting is going to stick to what, what I want. Uh, I can always change that and maybe uh, take the brightness down to something like 0.7, something like that. And that might uh, give us a little bit less light and just more darkness overall. So that's probably what I'm going to go for. It just gives us that nice rim lighting and keeps everything a little bit uh, just mysterious enough. So what I'm going to do is just going to hit render, uh, control P here, and I'm going to set my settings. I'm probably going to just do a, a 2K render, and I'll see you guys in Photoshop for the next lesson where I'll add some uh, images and start sort of photo bashing a whole bunch of textures as quickly as I can here to get some, some sort of presentation image out. Again, remember, we're sort of on a deadline. We want to move quickly. We want to do as much as we can with as little time as possible. So I'll go ahead and see you guys adding some cool textures to your uh, model. And uh, just so you guys are aware, uh, what I did here is a little bit of a gradient, basically black on black, a little bit sh uh, lighter shade of dark uh, with uh, a darker black. So really dark black, less dark black, I guess. And uh, it gives you sort of this ambiance to, to the scene, which I really like. Uh, I think it looks pretty good, pretty clean, and it's not going to give us any of those, you know, uh, just tone lines that you tend to get when you use gradients of different colors. Um, the other thing that I did was I duplicated this layer and did a high pass filter on it and set it to overlay 50%. So I've done this before on the uh, hyper detailing course and I didn't want to repeat myself too much. So I have some textures here. So this is what I'm going to use for the main skin. I have this here for other pieces of his body, maybe his head. I've got this for teeth, and I've got this rock wall for maybe his back. So, how do we go about uh, doing our quick little texture pass? Well, um, main thing that I want is to just select the this whole area here. You can go ahead and do select and then inverse, for example, something like that. And you can just create a quick mask. Pretty simple, right? And then you can come in here and play with the blending modes accordingly. Now, uh, what I'm looking for is not to lighten up the model uh, considerably, but this here, for example, already gives us 
quite an interesting look to our uh, texture. Now we can obviously play with uh, a lot more of these uh, so you can see that the soft light gives us a lot of interesting results and I like that so you see it's a little bit ripped over here over there and then we can select this mask here and use the black brush so let me go ahead and find my brush here so we can use a black brush and basically on areas that we don't want this texture to show up we can sort of erase it so we can get more of our eye back in there so the face itself I'm gonna use a different texture uh, to do my detailing with but I just wanted to show you that pretty quickly here we were able to add something to the body that looks fairly fairly cool right so obviously this is gonna be a different tone from everything else and, and that's okay uh, we'll go ahead and tweak that later but I wanted to show you that you don't have to just keep this where it is. Uh, you can, uh, for example, if you want, you can have other versions of this. So again, just do, select this layer here. Uh, you can create a mask with that. I guess we, we'd have to invert that mask. So select inverse. And now I'm going to go ahead and create that mask. You can click this here and then you see the image is really big, right? So the idea is if we can just come in here and make sure that the size is roughly the size of our creature so something like this so it fills the entire creature up we can play around with rotating it and getting different results so something like this I could maybe use for the face so let's go ahead and just uh, copy this quick mask here I don't really need that layer and we use soft light for this so we can use soft light for this as well or we can try something else and then you can see that this gives me more things to work with. Uh, you can take off the opacity and see what kind of a difference it's gonna really give you. Let me show you. So see, I'm gonna do 100% here so you can see. So this is one pattern on the body. Let me turn this off. So this is one pattern. This is another pattern. So you see this, the rips go down on another area of the body. It all looks a little bit different. So I kind of like this one a little bit better because it gives me a rip right in front of the shoulder there and the face, it gives me something I can use. Now the face itself, we still have to talk about the eyes and the teeth and things like that. So still what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get that mask and get a brush and we don't want any of that on our teeth. So let's go ahead and just paint that down. So we don't want any of that on our teeth. Try to be very delicate with your uh, brush strokes when you're over here because you don't you don't want to undo the work that you just did uh, you know getting this to look good on the face by you know ruining something like that so I can definitely see about adding a little bit less to the face in some areas but I want to keep it for the nose I can take a little bit off here definitely for the eyes right we don't want the eyes to be at all affected by this even though it's pretty dark I'd like to just keep some areas with the texture and some areas not okay and I like this effect for the head but I'm gonna take it off here on the on the zygomatic bone and things like that so this still gives us something to work with and I like that and we can maybe remove a few pieces here and there okay so what else can we use well we can definitely use that bone texture for the teeth let's go ahead and do that and the the process as you can already imagine is simple I wanted to keep this simple and I guess a little bit repetitive because it's just how the good techniques work you know it just it, it tends to uh, just work that way I guess so I can uh, try to copy this layer mask here or again just do that very simple very very simple thing of just selecting uh, everything here and then inverting that selection so select inverse and then we'll just turn everything on quick mask here there we go now uh, for the teeth itself I would like to definitely transform this as you can see move the thing is it's gonna move the mask right so before you do this let's go ahead and remove that mask there we go and let's scale this properly 
so for my teeth I'm probably gonna look into not having this uh, line just go down the middle but something like this that I think is gonna work well if we need to see we can always turn the opacity down here so something like this yeah so this here is probably what we're looking for for the teeth okay uh, again we can uh, try to copy this layer mask here and try to paste it yeah, it works but we want to create that with a mask okay didn't work let's go ahead and delete redo our mask select inverse really quick create that mask okay great now opacity at 100 percent and then blending modes let's play with these and see what gives us interesting looking things so this is interesting color dodge looks good overlay looks good too already colors our teeth differently I like soft light. Soft light seems to be the one that's working the best, but we can go uh, a little bit extreme if we like. This is good because this gives us an idea for lighting later. This divide layer looks good too. So let's go back just to overlay here, or multiply here. And let's see. I think we're going to stick to soft light again. Okay. And now what we can do is, in fact, we can, we might not even need this mask. We can just fill everything with black. And then we can switch our brush and go ahead and with white, just bring it back out on the teeth like this. And if it's too strong for you, uh, it's completely understandable and that's fine. But we're going to blur this in a second here. And I think it's important to uh, work non-destructively. So if you do a little bit more than you than you like, just make sure to use black instead of erasing, okay? I don't really want to be destructive with your workflow. Just come in there really close, zoom in, and then see what you can get as far as the result goes. Now, the one thing that I want to do before we wrap up, and uh, again, all I'm going to do is this, and then some color corrections, levels, things like that. Nothing that you haven't seen before on the uh, hyper detailing course as well, but this is a pretty quick technique that I, I felt like matched this pretty well. I want to get that uh, rock wall uh, organ pipes thing and I want to see if I can use that on the back really quick so again your layer let's make that small so something like that it might give us something interesting who knows right let's go ahead and select that layer select inverse quick mask it and then let's try blending modes so that's something that interests me. I wanted to get a mossy feel to it. Uh, and I think that, uh, that that is a way of doing it. So just with the blending modes themselves. So let's go ahead and find that blending mode that looked pretty good. And that should be, let's see, this one right here, color dodge. So color dodge looks good, better than soft light in this case. Soft light just kind of kills the, the color itself. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a whole bunch of this and uh, that's basically how I'm going to create our render, just a whole bunch of photo bashing. And to finish it all off, uh, if I just erase this really quickly here, I'm going to go ahead and so remove that selection there. Uh, we can use uh, an eraser here just so you can see. Uh, to finish it all off, I'm just going to flatten everything and then do some levels, corrections, some auto toning and auto contrasting just to see if I can get something more interesting looking. And that's about it, guys. So uh, I hope that you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and got a little bit of a head start in your designing uh, of ideas. And uh, I will see you guys. And I wanted to show you guys that uh, the best thing to do is to uh, take off the, I would say, the saturation on those rock images that we used. You see that if we leave them a little bit more black and white, that we can really get some really cool effects. It really matches the skin here. It kind of looks really cool. So that was pretty important for us to do. Now, um, the other thing that I like uh, to say is usually you just want to have this library of images. So I have a ton of images that I got on the internet. I keep adding to this constantly, but uh, this is just stuff that I found. So texture, tree, veins, rock, rock walls, things like that. So let's play, play around with the tree veins. So the trick is the same. So we select this image here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and paste it on a layer, right? And then uh, we'll go ahead and position it. So let's just say down here just for, uh, you know, uh, testing purposes. Now, uh, what do we need to do? 
basically same thing let's select a layer down here we'll just do a little selection here on the back and then we can just do a quick mask so you can see that uh, obviously that isn't wrong so we can go ahead and just just to remind you select inverse before we do the mask then there we go so generally speaking I do like to search for the right one but usually soft light is the best one to use uh, as you can see this is a little bit exaggerated right but that's okay if we take the opacity down quite a bit you can see what we're starting to form here is actually pretty cool and we can move this around uh, hopefully just the image not the mask and ideally what we'd like to do is to just leave it on the uh, hind side of the body here so I like how this looks I may even like a little bit of how it goes up into those rocky shoulders there but not quite that much so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlink these two images here so that way I can move the image here and just drag it all around so let's do something like this here I kinda like how that looks and remember what you can do is you can either erase the image or increase the mask so remember what's white is what's visible so if we get a little bit of black let's go ahead and grab it here you can just press D on the keyboard to go back to black and white um, we can go ahead here and just paint this with a little bit of black like so okay so do a little bit of this to the arm I don't leave it everywhere I just kind of remove some of these areas here just a few here and there and kind of remove that on the inside of the leg I think that's a bit exaggerated but something like this works now you can play around with other things you can try to divide uh, or if you want to go for a more bluish scar tone you can go for subtract exclusion all that kind of stuff I generally like to stick with soft light because as you can see it really blends in really nicely with the material so let's just keep soft light uh, as our option here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing again but I'm gonna push it towards the front of the body so let's go ahead and paste that image in and what we can do now is kind of rotate it so that uh, it doesn't affect everything exactly like we were thinking let's go ahead and grab that same mask and then we'll just do a quick mask again uh, again, inverting the mask. Uh, so I select inverse. Here we go. And then we'll do quick mask. We can unlink that mask and then move it around if we need to, which uh, is what we want. So actually the image, not the mask. So there we go. So that works for me. And I think this is going to be good for us. Let's try soft light again. And where is it? There we go. Okay, so there we go. Soft light, plenty of veins, plenty of uh, gnarly stuff going on. But we can we can make this better. So let's take off the opacity down. It doesn't need to match the same opacity. So we got 37 here. We can leave this at 57. If it looks good, then that's all we need. So let's see here what we can do. Just by going in here with our brush again. Just grab my brush here. You just paint out the face here, which we want to brighten up, by the way, very soon. See if we can manage to do that in this lesson. But we can try to kind of get it a little bit away from the rocks. Maybe just leave them a little bit red here and there. So anywhere where it would overlap the other side here with the hind legs, we can just kind of leave it alone. So something like this, just kind of remove it from the rocks, stuff like that. So this works for me. And then I can just go ahead and uh, remove a little bit more of the opacity. You can see it really darkens everything up here. Uh, ideally, we want to make sure that uh, we don't have anything that we don't want over here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this area up here. Because the soft light kind of took out that black. So I want to make sure that this is lit up properly. Also, when you grab your eraser, make sure it's a very soft eraser so that you don't... Uh, undo things a little bit too harshly always a good thing so there we go uh, it may not look like much but it actually adds quite a bit to the depth of that shoulder area and all that stuff so I like that a lot even add a little bit up here which I like so there we go just cleaning that up a little bit and uh, let's just see here yeah this looks pretty good to me so what else can we add to this texture? Well, I have a really, really cool texture here that I like to use a lot, which is this uh, either this bone or this cave wall. So we've used the bone. Let's go ahead and grab the cave wall here. And what I want to do with this cave wall is kind of light up the face. I want to sort of add some more texture to this area here. So let's try our best here. Let's just add a texture here. I'll go ahead and just give it a rotate. So something like this here, position it rather loosely. Let's do the same thing we do. 
select and then inverse that selection. There we go. And now we can select that, do the mask, unlink those two just because then you can kind of see what I'm going for. So here's where we test out our blending mode. So we can try um, linear burn, lighten, color dodge looks kind of cool. Linear dodge looks okay. Overlay kind of works. I like overlay. Soft light looks pretty good. Hard light, not so much. So what we can do is I think we can try maybe color dodge. If not color dodge, we can try overlay or soft light. So let's try color dodge for now. It's a little bit strong as you guys can see, but there's an answer for that and that is the opacity. So let's go ahead and take that down a notch. So something like that will definitely help us out. Now let's go ahead and grab the black here and let's just see if we can't uh, actually reduce some of this around the face. So something like this might work out. And leave a little bit on the teeth, but not too much. So something like this, just keep darkening that, you know, get rid of these harsh edges here. And you can see that I've created an inside texture to that area of the rock there on the back, which I like. So we can kind of clean that up a little bit there. And then we add some texture to the forehead. That's all about layering. So this area here, maybe not, not so hot, right? So we can probably just remove it altogether. And then again, just leave it a little bit here and there. You see how that adds something to it? I always think that's pretty important. Uh, I do think this is a bit much though, so I'm gonna remove that on our bloody layer. And I like this pretty well. So this is pretty good to me. I still wanna add some more things. Um, one of the things that you can do, uh, I like to try divide sometimes because the way divide works is it makes everything blue if it's red. So I think divide is also pretty cool because what we can do here is actually just use the, so since I've done a lot of erasing, uh, it's actually not gonna work out so well for us. So if you wanna do divide, and I'll go ahead and do it again here. If you wanna do divide, you wanna do it without erasing. So if I just do it really quick here, just so you can see. So there we go. Let's just do select, inverse, and then uh, we'll do a mask here. We can just do divide. And look at that, that looks pretty cool, right? So I've tested this out before and I really kind of like the result that it gave me. So just see where it's really bright. Let me just unlink this here. So I'd like to move, uh, select the image. I like to move this brightness up top to the forehead as you can see. I really like how this looks. Now I can use the masking tools by using my brush here and just trying my best to actually paint the mask itself. So if we select the mask now, and then just paint this in black, we can start removing it all together from these areas. You can see we can just kind of give it a little bit of a hint of a blue. Just remove this area here from the teeth. And I kind of like where this is going. So something like his head has a you know charged energy, something like that, something different. And uh, we can remove the opacity even more and that just gives us something else to look at. So let's keep working on this guy. I have a ton of other things I want to do, and uh, we'll keep doing that. And I showed you, I just tweaked uh, a few things here. As you can see uh, on this uh, one blood image here, I decided that I kind of wanted it going across all over the body. Let me just turn these off here, just so you can see. So as you can see, I maintain the, uh, the back here exactly as you saw it. But then I decided to add uh, just a whole new layer here. Uh, and basically all I did was I just kind of erased the middle on the mask, as you can take a look at the mask here, it's just kind of painted in the middle all over the place. So I kind of left it in a few areas here and there. And then I did uh, the same thing here with that cave wall. I kept it on divide and I did a really low opacity. And as you can see, I kind of masked the middle of the body, but I kind of lit up a little bit of everything. So you see how we get this kind of a play in the colors. Now, if you just experiment with the masking and the images that I showed you there, uh, again, you can find those really easily by going cave wall in Google. Um, you can see that we get some really cool mixes going and I really like that. So I did the same thing on a face uh, and as you can see it kind of lights it up a little bit more. I decided that I kind of wanted it a little bit everywhere instead of just on the head because it lights up the face and I kind of like this white skin look that it gave us. And then uh, again this is that bone texture that we gave at the teeth here that I'm just uh, turning off and on. 
uh, I did change it to soft light and a bit more opacity, but that's about it. So let's talk textures again. What else can we do? Well, there's a few of the things that I want to do specifically to this uh, back here that I want to play around with. But let's go ahead and grab a few more textures in order for us to get there. So what I'm looking for is either one of these cave walls here um, or just this demon skin that I really like to use. So there's a few uh, images that we can use. I'm probably just going to go for this one here, this cave stone wall or this DCS 168 here that I have. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these two in here. And I think this is the one that I want to use since the DC here is just a bit more organic. So there we go. Let's grab cave stone wall texture. Let's go ahead and open up our PSD there. If my mouse will click. There we go. So same deal as you guys are well aware at this point, right? Let's go ahead and take this size down. Now I'm going to rotate this here so that these darker edges are a little bit closer to the top. That way it kind of looks the way it's supposed to. We'll do the same thing that I did before. Again, you guys probably know this by heart right now. Select inverse. My mouse doesn't click sometimes when I'm recording. It's very annoying, but here we go. Um, we'll add the layer mask. There we are. Click. There we go. All right. So you see how we got this rock looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, let's try color dodge here. So that looks pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, but let's see what else we got. We got overlay. We got soft light. Hard light looks pretty good too. Linear light, pen light. Well. So this is why I really like working with Windows. You, you kind of have a trouble doing this on uh, Mac computers because you can't really do this cycling of the images here. Now, this looks pretty cool. Darker color as well. This also looks pretty cool. Now, I'm just trying to get an organic look to it. So this looks really nice. What we can do is we can take a little bit of the opacity, but I'd like to take some of the saturation as well. So maybe not so much opacity as we just do. Let's just do a control U here. Right, you can just go to image here, adjustments, and then uh, hue and saturation. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I'm selecting the mask. That's why it's not going. So control U should do it. It's opening here on my other window. So we can take the saturation off very much like so. And you can see the light is just what's behind it. That's pretty cool. And uh, we can take the lightness down a little bit like so. So that's, that looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and just uh, grab... Our little layer mask here so select that grab the the black paint and then we'll just go ahead and do this so we'll just erase the borders right kind of erase the neck there make sure you don't get too much stuff going in there and I kind of like that because now it looks sort of like a little bit of a rock formation that really uh, kind of ticks it the way I want it to it looks really organic I really like how that looks now after you've sort of done the cleanup that I've done you can kind of try out the other blending modes so I'm going to take the opacity down again and we can try the uh, the blending modes again so overlay vivid light still looks pretty good I'm going I'm feeling the subtleties a little bit better but again this is uh, purely up to your taste and uh, what you prefer is what you should go with but for me I'm most likely going to keep it either in the color dodge or I'm going to do something a little bit like the darker color, which just it doesn't make everything show up completely. I think I'm going to keep it to the color dodge for now. And I want to show you guys how I would uh, make the eyes red. I have a final image up here. I just want to show you guys the, the steps I took to get there. So let's go ahead and grab this layer here. And what I want to do is I want to do some red eyes. So let's go ahead and grab some red color. There we go. Let's zoom in on those eyes. And what we want to do is just paint it over here, okay? Now you don't have to make it perfect or leave it very strong. Just be careful not to get past the eye area. There we go. So very loosely. And now what you can do is uh, fairly simple. So you can find a blending mode that fits. I'm pretty sure that uh, when you do a linear dodge add, um, this uh, really kind of blends it into the eye. Then what I do is very simple. I duplicate this, so it gets really strong, and then I duplicate it again, and then I do filter, and I do blur, then we do Gaussian blur. There we go. Let me just bring that in there. It's always on my second monitor there, so there we go. Now I can increase that, and you can see it really gives you that range, and I like that quite a lot. 
So we can do this, and that looks really cool to me. And now we can just zoom out here and have a look at what we have to show. Now this is looking pretty cool. I like how it's going, but we can do a little bit more to it. So if we add some snow or some particles to the back, it'd be really cool. So I already have some set up here. I want to show you how I did them though. So you'll see that these add a whole bunch uh, to our design. So let's just go ahead and click it here. So as you can see, these are the same things that I did with the eyes. Basically, it's just a brush that I have. So it's one of those brushes that you can come in default with Photoshop. It's just one of these uh, noisy ones down here. And what you want to do is you just want to kind of uh, make it really, really big. I'll just do it on a, on a new layer and show you guys. So you can do it really, really big like this. And I know it's probably going to look very exaggerated, but uh, don't worry about it. It should uh, work out just fine. So let's take off the opacity to something like 55. And then you can just kind of tap it here and there. Obviously, we want to do it with the white. You can see the white selected down there, but you can kind of do this. And then what I like to do is, and obviously this is not the brush that I used. It's just I can't give you guys that one. I purchased it off a of package, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is the one I used. So you can kind of add these specs here. And the trick to doing this, in my mind, is to actually just uh, use this as your eraser. So if you select your eraser and pick that same image, or you can even pick a different image. So let's just pick uh, this one here uh, for, you know, just uh, our, our demonstration's sake. You just erase some of this here and just kind of tap it. There we go. And you can see we start generating some of these particles. And then what I do is I just duplicate this layer a whole bunch and I move it all over. And obviously I'm going to uh, be doing this a whole bunch so I can just hold Alt and drag this down. And then I can rotate these edges here. And you can add some more of these uh, thicker particles and stuff like that. So we can keep doing this. And then what I like to do, as you can see, we can just kind of erase this area here we can actually duplicate these on top of each other as well just like we did the eyes and then they'll line up a little bit more so we can have a little bit of smoke coming in and things like that now you could use uh, very specific brushes that are made for smoke and things like that and I'm just giving you guys a crude example of how I did this but the best thing to do after this is so let's go ahead and just merge all of these down okay and then let's go ahead and use uh, blur and we'll just use motion blur and that way, anything that looks really weird and uh, out of place, we can just kind of instantly get it to smooth out. You see how this kind of just makes everything a little bit smoother? You can just kind of angle that down. And then very quickly here, remove the opacity. And then there you go. You've got a, an image that looks pretty cool. I've added this now, like I said, with just a custom brush that I have here. Uh, I don't even remember which one it was at this point because I did it so quickly. I think I loaded it up here. Um, and then I just used that same technique that I showed you. So I drew in uh, a lot of stuff and then I erased it and I just pushed it uh, to the back. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me show you guys what my final image is looking like. It's a little bit different um, from what you guys are seeing. It's just a little bit lighter because what I've done is um, I've just flattened all this here. So let's go ahead and just uh, flatten everything. So let me just grab all the layers here and, uh, and flatten them before we end up really quickly. And then uh, what I do is I just do a little bit of levels adjustments. So I just do a little bit of leveling here and there. Then I like to do, like I mentioned before, uh, auto toning. And uh, this is already auto tone and then auto contrast as well. And that way it gives us a really nice end result. And this is something that you can present to an art director and say, yeah, this is the image. This is the idea for the creature. You can kind of tell him already, you know, he's got this moss uh, rocky back, very dark red glowing eyes and shows up in the dark woods. He's a night hunter, you know, you can imagine it surrounded by snow, all that kind of stuff. You can tell a story. If the director isn't really sure what direction to go with, you can give him something to go on. And then he'll change it and you'll keep going. And uh, that's how you get it to final design. I hope you guys enjoyed this course and I hope that it helps you uh, achieve your own designs to the best of your abilities. Thank you so much for watching. I'll